Nana's a pretty special person. The best way to describe her is she's unlike anybody you've ever met. She's kind of like your best friend, your mom, that cool aunt, like all wrapped into one package. <laughs> I knew that. <laughs> I felt like if I, if I would have grown up with her in my life, she'd be like that cool aunt that if you did something wrong and did it in trouble, she'd, you know, she'd scold you for it, but she'd hide it from your mom and dad too at the same time. You know? <laughs> She's one of a kind. What you see is what you get. <laughs> She's not afraid to do or say anything around anybody, and that's what I love about her. You don't believe me, do you? <laughs> She's just unique and one of the most kind-hearted, generous people that I've ever known. My late husband, Steve, this was his playground. This is where he lived. He, he hunted probably since he was big enough to walk. Fished on the creek down there. His parent, or his dad, bought this property in the early 1900s. So that's how long it's been in the family. I started coming out here helping my uncle Steve, like in the summers, to feed cows and stuff like that, and then. At a young age, I started driving like all of the equipment, the bobcat, the backhoe. She just tagged along with everybody coming out here, going dove hunting, and just spending time out here. I, I mean, heck, I don't know how many days a year, but she just grew up coming out here, and it's always been a special place for her. You know, this is, this is her second home. This is a part of her. She always has a story behind everything. Oh, I remember my dad did this with this, or Steve out here, or Nana, or, she, there's stories beyond stories out here, and I just know that this place out here is it's one of a kind to her, and it's near and dear to her heart. Can I have a bite? Can I have a bite? Steve passed away in June the 19th of uh, 2016, and very suddenly, very unexpected. But after Steve passed away, I, I just couldn't hardly stand to come up here, so, and I didn't want anybody else on the place. I just, I just couldn't do it, you know. So the place hadn't been hunted on since 2016. Or maybe it was on your list. Yes, you did. <laughs> that's one. That's one that'll never be forgotten, isn't it? I knew that she hadn't hunted in a while, and I didn't exactly know how long until I went to buy her license for her for this. The last time she had bought a license was the year that her husband died, right before Steve died. She had bought a license and that's pretty sentimental in my eyes because this is the first time that she's going to go sit in a deer blind with somebody who's not her husband. She's trying to shoot that first deer that she hasn't shot in a long time because that's what her and Steve did. And just being able to do that with her after not hunting for so long it's pretty special to me, and I know it's pretty sentimental to her as well. He's a really young deer. This one is. We've got a ton of, we've got a ton of bucks like that this year. It's funny. They're everywhere. They're coming after that protein. It's just going right now. Didn't see a deer until probably could have got one shot off, but it was a spike and not a doe. We needed a doe. But had it been a doe, we would be skinning a deer right now. I had nine brothers and my dad, they all loved to hunt. Every deer season, every one of them would come home and bring their families. The guys would all go hunting. I never got to go hunting. The, the women's place was at home. So I never got to hunt until I married Steve. He took me over to where his uncle managed some property. Yeah, this ten point came down the creek bed and, you know, running full blast and I shot him. After that, I kind of got hooked, you know, and Steve loved it. His parents loved it, so, and I'd grown up with it.
deer are done with the rut. You know, some parts of Texas this time of year, South Texas deer are in the rut, but these deer are done. So these deer are really concentrated on feed right now. And so we're just trying to sit on these different feed stations or feeders, corn feeders that we have here. So these deer are accustomed to that. That's what we do out here in Texas. And so we're just trying to figure out based on the wind, looking at hunt zone, what the best situation is gonna be where we can get in the blind and have some deer out in front of us. We can relax now. Then we can drink a beer. Then we can drink a beer. things we like to do every year is we like to do a big meat grind from the deer that get shot so in total we've got four deer here that we like to mix up with some pork and just what I'm doing now is we've got all of our meat cut up into the chunks the sizes we like and so we're just gonna start putting through the grinder we'll start reducing sizes the way the meat that comes out of the grinder and so we'll do that mix it with the pork and then here in a little bit we'll have an assembly line with everybody we'll just get everything lined up and we'll start bagging and then get all this meat in the freezer we, yeah, we each have our little duties, you know. I mean, uh, when they kill a deer and quarter it, Will cuts it off the bone, they freeze it until we are ready to have a grind. So now we got all the meat ground up, and what we're doing now is we're getting them back, so that way uh, we can get our two tires here, get them set up, and we can get this done. Two tires. Two tires. Not T-I-R-E-S. Tires. Okay. I thought we could fashion one on here. We could. We could. We could. The first time I brought Will out here, um, I was showing off, you know, and my Uncle Steve had passed away at this time, so nobody had, nobody was really coming out here, but I still knew, like, where the keys were to, like, start the backhoe and everything, and I was like, I'm gonna get up here and show him how to do it. Steve had taught her to drive all the heavy equipment, and uh, he said, come on, and so Will jumped on, and go, man, wow, he, he was impressed. Of course, Kelly was shining, you know. Uh, he may have, I don't know, he didn't hunt before they married, well, they didn't date that long, so probably by the first year they married, he was up, you know. He came up here, he was just gonna come and hang out, you know, not push himself and thinking, well, you know, I'm gonna hunt. He wouldn't do that, you know. I had no idea if anybody hunted out here, but I knew that the farm was a special place for family and family alone. And I'm just the new guy on the block and everybody's looking at me like, who are you? And I didn't want to be that guy, you know. I said, don't you want to hunt? He goes, well, yeah, but I, you know, I, I don't have to. I said, I'll help pay for the corn or whatever, you know, so. And he's been coming back ever since, you know, because I trusted him. I'm a pretty good judge of character. I could just tell he's the kind of guy you could trust. You know, he's not going to do anything that he didn't ask for. And so just like slowly, I, I got to do more and more out here. And then, um, you know, Nana trusted me to pretty much keep an eye on this place, which is what I've done. You know, if something's gone awry or something's broken or I plow fields, plant oats and stuff out here for cows. And she's trusted to help me do that. And so since that point, I've kind of essentially gotten a man as a deer herd with my wife. And, you know, we've killed some pretty big deer out here. Nana's a certified badass. Like, she comes out here, she still runs the equipment, she hops on the bobcat, she goes and pushes dirt. I mean, she still does a ton of things out here.
people after they're around me a while said, you, you love your family more than anybody I've ever known. Well, I never had kids. I'm the youngest of 13. I've been around and raised kids all of my life. And being the youngest, I took care of my mother and stayed with her a lot. So I know all of the family, whereas most don't because they've not been around, you know. We have our family reunion every year and I handle it, but Kelly's always been right by my side. She could take it over. She and Will actually, you know, handle it as much as I do now. So, yeah, that's, well, that's what family's for. You know, we live in the city. We don't have a lot of places that we can come out and we can go hunting uh, close to home or doing just shooting guns, shooting bows. We can't do a lot of that. And having a place like this for our kids to come out to enjoy that and learn and just be immersed in the outdoors, I mean, that's, that's another reason why this place is so special and why I hope that they can have that one day.